We are learning chilling new details about the doctor who preyed on his patients in Maryland. As we've reported, the OBGYN took explicit, sexually explicit photos and videos of thousands of women and girls. He worked with Johns Hopkins Hospital, which will have to pay out nearly $200 million to victims in what may be the biggest settlement of its kind. Michelle Miller sat down with some of those patients. Michelle, good morning. Good morning. Over two decades, Dr. Nikita Levy saw more than 12,000 patients and his breach of trust seemed to know no boundaries. For the first time, we're hearing from his victims, young and old, even mothers and their daughters. I was angry. Because I took my kids to him. I trusted him with my children. Not only just me, but my kids. Stasi Simmons Whitehead started seeing Dr. Nikita Levy in 2007. Her 14 and 15 year old daughters two years later. Jocelyn Brown was a patient for more than 25 years. Did you ever feel as though he crossed the line? Certain ways examination supposed to go just didn't feel comfortable. But I thought I'm young and naive, like, okay, maybe this is right. They the professional one, I'm just a patient. It just didn't seem right. Ignoring their intuition, neither reported what seemed wrong at this East Baltimore clinic run by Johns Hopkins Medical Center. Neither knew the hospital required a chaperone present during examinations. Dr. Levy would always see them alone and had an uncanny fascination with a pen that hung from his neck. The pen. I used to tease him about the pen around the neck. You did? Yes, I did. Because he played with it like it was a toy. And I'm like, oh, you know, is that your toy? He's like, oh, it's one of my favorite pens. So when the news broke, I told my ex-husband, I said, there was a camera in that pen. I guarantee you there was a camera in that pen. There was more than just one. Dr. Levy had a collection of gadgets he used to secretly take thousands of sexually explicit pictures of his patients. In February of 2013, an office worker reported her suspicions to Johns Hopkins. And within five days, Dr. Levy was questioned and fired. Johns Hopkins had a policy of having chaperones being present during these types of pelvic examinations that were done. And that was not uniformly being done. Attorneys Howard Janet and Jonathan Shokor led the class action lawsuit against Johns Hopkins and interviewed more than 4,000 of Dr. Levy's patients. Did Johns Hopkins drop the ball? Yes, absolutely. His breast examinations were inappropriate. His pelvics were too often and many without gloves. Did any of his patients ever complain, raise a red flag? Yes, he was reported to the charge nurses. He was reported to other physicians. He was reported to any personnel they could find at, at the clinic. You're saying that if Johns Hopkins didn't know, it should have known. That's correct. Johns Hopkins Medicine never admitted wrongdoing and declined our request for an interview. But in a statement told us they have redoubled efforts to uphold the highest standards of patient privacy and have implemented numerous steps to educate, inform, and empower our staff to identify and alert us if they have concerns. Authorities never had the chance to charge Dr. Levy. He committed suicide just as a police investigation began. Does this settlement bring any closure? For me, no. I am a victim of sexual abuse. And you have to take baby steps. It's just a little bandage to try to lay on the open scar, but I'm gonna come out of it though, because I'm a survivor, you know, like I believe she is as well. You know, it's, it's time, it takes time to heal. Law enforcement authorities did not find any evidence that Dr. Levy had sold or posted any of his pictures on the Internet and consider the case now closed. The amount each patient will receive will be determined individually based on the level of harm Dr. Levy committed against them. All right, Michelle, thank you.